What's up everybody? Hello and welcome to episode 4 of Broke and Boosted. If you don't know what Broke and Boosted is, I invite you to check out episode 1, 2, and 3. And for the mobile users that probably can't see these annotations, I've also included links in the description to previous episodes. Today I'm going to be showing you how to rebuild a turbocharger. This is the old China turbo off of my other Miata. It's the T25, T28, SR20 replacement turbo from Anjuku Racing to be exact. Now of course it wouldn't be fair to you guys if I just started using free parts that I already had laying around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this turbo that was uh, brand new, $350 or so. I'm going to value it at $130 plus the rebuild kit which was $45. So a uh, total budget for the turbo of $175. Now for $175 bucks, you could get either a brand new turbo from eBay or better yet, a T25 off of Craigslist or my favorite spot for scoping T25s, the Nissan Forum, Zilvia.net. Now, why do I love the T25 so much? In my opinion, it is the best turbo for a Miata with a stock engine because they spool really fast, they can make over 200 wheel horsepower, they're easy to find used, and they have the most choices off the shelf for manifold and downpipe combos. Without further ado, let's get to work. The first thing you have to do is remove the housings from your turbocharger. And for that, you're going to need a pair of snap ring pliers. You might need to use a flat head to help you out a little bit. There we go. That clip was insanely tight. After you remove this, be extremely careful with the compressor wheel because uh, it's very fragile. The blades are very thin and you do not want to damage it at all. If these are too tight, it can be kind of hard to hold the turbo and loosen them. So what I do is I'll go ahead and put the wrench on the bolt. I'll just tap the other side of the wrench with the hammer here. Loosens it up pretty easy. After you get your bolts and these retaining plates out, you will be able to remove the turbine housing. Um, it might take a little bit of love to remove. Mine was pretty stuck. I gave it a few taps already, but it seems to be moving. Um, you don't want to smash it, but just something like that. Oh, there we go. Next thing we're going to do here is pull out the whole uh, center assembly. On the turbine side, this nut uh, on my turbo is a 13 millimeter and it's actually welded to the turbine wheel. And this nut is an 8 millimeter 12 point. This is what's going to come loose. Now the threads on this are reversed, so you're going to spin this nut clockwise in order to remove it. Before you remove anything, you'll notice right here there's a little cutout from the compressor wheel and that's where it's been balanced. So you want to line everything up when you put it back together the same way it was. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this and I'm going to try to get all those marks to line up when I reassemble it. And remember you're going to spin the compressor nut clockwise to remove it. It's opposite thread. I'm guessing it's going to be pretty tight. Oh, there we go. Careful not to drop it. That's your compressor wheel. That is your turbine wheel. And that is nasty. That is all some oil buildup in there after I had this turbo on my car for about 28,000 miles. Next, you have another snap ring in there that has to be removed. As I take things apart more, I like to try to keep everything in order as I do it. It always seems when you're taking it apart, you're going to remember how to put it back together. But then when everything's fully disassembled and you go to start putting it back together, you can't remember how half the stuff went and you have to figure it out. This helps me save a lot of time. This plate in here might be a little bit stuck even after you remove the clip. So what you can do is get a small flathead screwdriver, stick it in the side, kind of pry it away, give it a little pull and it'll come loose just like that. Next you have three little torques 
inside there holding the thrust washer in. They shouldn't be too tight because they're really small. Once you remove the three Torx bolts, you'll be able to get the washer out. Next, you have another little washer to pull out. And then inside there, journal bearing. There's another journal bearing on the exhaust side and way down in there, there's another tiny clip. So I'm gonna use a couple of picks to get in there and compress it. So I know that was really difficult to see, but what you wanna do is get your picks and get one in each one of the little tiny holes and you just have to compress this ring, squeeze it together and you'll be able to pull it out. Once you get that clip out, you can reach down in with your pick and remove the other journal bearing. There are another pair of snap rings way down in the middle of the CHRA, but I am not gonna mess with getting those things out because they look like they're really hard to get back in and there's not really any parts left down in the turbo. There is one oil seal on the compressor side that you can just pull out with the pick. And then after that, I just like to try to clean this thing up as much as I can. I'll use uh, some brake cleaner and a rag and uh, some kind of abrasive brush. You don't want to use anything too crazy like a metal brush or anything. You can also use pipe cleaners to get inside the CHRA. Before you go and put everything back together, there's one last oil seal. It's a metal ring. It's right behind the turbine wheel. I'll use a combination of a small flat blade screwdriver and a pick. Then once you get it worked out of that groove, it just comes right off. So I'm gonna take my new seal, just get it started here. It's gonna to wanna to sit in this upper groove, but that's not the right place for it. It's gotta get into this deeper, lower groove. And that's it. Here we have the old turbine wheel backing plate compared to the new one. I can just put it on like that. With your journal bearings, you have to do the same comparison. These are our old ones. Those are the new ones that are gonna work. And it also came with this other set. You can see that the old ones are taller, so those are not the ones you're gonna use. You won't even use those at all. Here's my new bearing. Just gonna take a little bit of oil here and give it a little coat. Come over here to the turbine side. Drop it right in. And then you have to reinstall this clip, which is gonna be a little bit tricky. Hopefully you guys can see that. New journal bearing. Give it a little coat of oil. Drop it right in. This is the old piece that popped out of the front side. I didn't disassemble it before. It actually comes apart and you have another oil seal in there. You do have to install the new oil seal. You can usually do it by hand. Make sure it's all the way seated. That piece just clicks in like that. After your journal bearing is in place, you have to put this washer spacer thing back in. And the rebuild kit came with new bolts for the thrust plate. Put just a little drop of Loctite on each one before I put it in. You don't want to make these too tight because of how small they are. And the Allen heads are actually pretty easy to strip. But the Loctite will hold them in place. Just get them real real snug. One small o-ring drops into place just like that. Then you have this piece assembled earlier. Goes right on top of the o-ring. Be sure to get your snap ring completely seated. To replace your 
compressor housing o-ring just pull the old one right off make sure you clean up where it sits brand new one goes on just like that next up go ahead and put a little bit of oil on that shaft that oil seal can be a little bit difficult to get into place basically you just have to twist this around and, and shake it a little bit eventually you'll feel it pop into place like that on the compressor side you have your sharpied mark on the shaft and you're gonna line that up with the mark on the compressor wheel remember these are opposite threads I just kind of go by feel on this and tighten it up right back about how tight it was when I pulled it off it doesn't have to be insanely tight you do have the Loctite on there and it's opposite thread so the nut cannot rotate loose make sure it spins freely and you're ready to reinstall your housings next I'm gonna go ahead and do the turbine housing oh you you noticed that my wastegate is ported and you want to know how to do it yourself and what the reasons are one would want to port their wastegate head on over to broken boosted episode 4.1 for a little bit of bonus footage when you're reinstalling your housings you want to pay attention to what direction they're facing because you can clock them any way you want and it kind of depends on what manifold you have and you know how your lines are routed and stuff like that just carefully drop that back in I'm just going to put my new plates on and then reinstall the four bolts that I took out earlier. After the turbine housing bolts are tightened up, you're going to reinstall the compressor housing and it's the same deal where you want to clock it whatever direction is best for your setup. Just go ahead and carefully put that on. Same way it came out, you just have to grab it with your snap ring pliers, give it a good squeeze. Drop it back in and that's it. Obviously you wanna make sure it spins freely. And I wanna show you a comparison of how much shaft play this turbo did have before the rebuild compared to now. So check this clip out. This thing is finally giving up on me. Now check this out. Very little play. And like I said, once those journal bearings get oil pressure into them, the play will be even less. That's how you rebuild a turbo. That's about it for this episode. This turbo is now ready for broken boosted. I've got a lot of episodes planned coming very soon. Thank you for your patience. I know I took a little break, but this will get us kicked off again and um, plan on many more in the coming weeks. Thanks for watching. If you like the videos, don't forget to subscribe. I will see you in episode five.